Hello and welcome. Got a Marshall JTM30 on the bench today. Um, this has got no output at all. Uh, so these came at um, about 96, 97, I think. This is the 210 version, and uh, it's got two eminence speakers in. The 112 had a Celestion, but this one's got the eminence. Uh, it's most people have probably seen these before. So we have volume on this channel. It's a twin channel amp, so we've got volume um, and there, and we'll, that is just, if I remember, that volume is just for that single channel on its own. I think the sure the EQ, which is just there, the bass, middle, and treble, and then this gain and volume is for the second channel. Uh, we've got a reverb on there and we've got a master volume pretty simple thing really usual set out with marshals a standby switch there uh, let's have a look at the back so there you can see the eminent speakers in the back there um usual uh, ah this amp's been to champ electronics at nottingham there we've got his got his sticker on it good tech he is um i think he's retired now but yeah um a great tech that guy um we've got fuse mains lee main socket their usual thing we've got a line out emulated line out on this which is a bit strange for a tube amp but um usual thing um all that crap there pat testing and uh, and it's and we can see that it's made of Chipboard is that looks like it. Yeah, some kind of board anyway chipboard. It's certainly not ply No, and you can see the coverings coming off there. I mean got to think this amps 25 years old, so um, Now this amps on six L6s and um, It um, these transformers to me seem if you look inside the you can probably see but they're like that they, they seem a might small on these well look what's just fallen out of there that um that's the um the valve guide um that snapped off you usually see that a lot you see the pip on there that actually um guides the valve into the socket correctly so you don't get the pins the wrong way around so i don't know what that's about whether that's off another valve previously so you can see how small these transformers are the and the when these came out the uh, they had a spate of um, power transformer failures which are quite a lot the reason i know that is that at the time um that these came out uh, the shop i was working in had the marshall dealership and i was working under a, a, a tech at the time in those days and uh, yes that uh, that's the power transformer and you can see again not particularly huge for running you know the two 6L6s and you can see those there now uh, under there mounted sideways I'm going to take this grill off and just check those now I've found that uh, uh, plastic tip off there just zoom that out sorry I'm, I'm just going to whip that off so if we pull out this tube and look at that you can see that's broken off I think we'll super glue that back on. So yes, I had a feeling that was broken. I also had the feeling that someone's been in here recently. That uh, grill over the valves was uh, virtually hanging off. So now you can you can see how these tubes are mounted now. Right, I'm going to glue this thing back uh, through uh, pip here. Right, I'll say that again. I'm going to glue this uh, pip back on this tube, and then um, we'll plug it in and have a listen. Right, before we fire it up, we'll just have a look inside it. So, for anyone who's not seen inside one of these before, you've got a board going across the back there. Sorry, the front there. Back to us because we've got it the other way around. So, you've got that board going across there, and then you've got this board which is a kind of stood up on its head on its end here, and then all the heat from the tubes is coming through there and obviously these are getting a fair dash so of that heat these um and if you look if we just hone in if you look at some of these are beginning to come loose look the they have, have a blob of, of glue 
put on them in the factory and, it, and in fact a piece has just dropped out on the bench so that's just crumbled off with age just the constant heat you can see it on that one it's, so they'll they need a dressing so it's like someone's dropped a, a soldering iron on them at some point checking for dry joints you can see that if we just sorry if we're just looking there you, know, you probably can't tell but that don't look like factory soldering to me so I think this capacitor has been changed down here in fact it has because if you look you can see a circle where a, um, where a, a, a can cap used to be now it's got this axial in there um, which is a bit loose because it's got no uh, silicon around it which is a bit naughty on amps on guitar amps because they carried around constantly and you can see whoever's put that in has not bothered to clip off the leads no nothing serious it's just there's a bit of a, a, a soda extravaganza at the other end nothing serious but it's just untidy but other than that and again so we'll probably get a blob of silicon on there and uh, these caps are obviously original and uh, I think I'm just looking at that again just have a look at that yeah, it looks like there were two capacitors there well that's no maybe not maybe just one so yeah anyway that's uh, that just needs a bit of a coat of looking at of course that's assuming we find the fault with this amplifier if it's the output transformer then given on what this amps worth it's probably toast so let's plug it in and uh, see what to uh, see what's occurring right i've got this amp fired up and uh, these tubes are barely getting warm they are just starting to warm up now so have we got voltage missing or something i'll have to see so i'll have to have a bit of a test round and there's the offending item that's all it was but um valve tube on the second stage there that um that valve has said good night so that's it really apart from uh, that that seems to be we can you can hear it's up and running there it's a bit noisy but that's probably the reverb that's um control so that channel uh, ah there we go that'll be the re reverb ah, but so that's caught quite that down yeah that seems okay i think what i will do though is i'm just going to put some blobs of glue on those caps um and make sure they're secure and i'm going to put some on that just tidy that uh, electrolytic up there that some someone's added but yeah seems to be running so quick repair that one um so what we'll do is i'll do those few bits and bobs just check the channel switching on it before we start jumping for joy Hmm, let's just investigate that a bit further. Right, I've just stuck a lead in this. The the, the, the channel, the, both channels are working, but check this out. That is a pot that is doing that. And you can see it is, um, it is the second one in uh, where this, you can see the pilot light, the, the channel switching light indicator. Now I'm rather hoping that that's just a loose washer on there because if it's not I'm going to have to take that whole board out to replace that pot and whilst swearing on this channel the channel is strictly banned <laughs> I may have to make an exception in the case of that if I've got to take that board out How if I have to take out that board I will not be happy um, and it's I wouldn't bother normally but the problem with this board is that as soon as you begin to pull it back you're into this you're into this board 
So you're kind of then gambling on the fact that you're going to be able to get that board out. And if not, if you can't get that board out and there's not enough clearance before you meet this said board here, um, then I'm going to have to take both of them out. And then I really might have to swear on this channel. So I'm going to investigate that. Well, at least we've got the thing running, though. That's the main thing. Um, to be honest, I mean, there is heat coming up there, but they, you would, those valves aren't exactly glowing, so they must be biased pretty well. Probably just check the bias on it as well, but that's looking pretty good. But will we have to get, will we have to take that board out for that pot? So let's have a meddle with it and see. So I've just spotted something else now. When once I wasn't looking through the camera, and I bet you'd already spotted it before me. Somebody has botched that pot in there. Look, got that that pot um, has been done. Actually, it's probably a good way of doing it. It uh, sticks out a bit, but like a sore thumb. But it's probably a good way of doing it because it's now not fastened into the board. So this is the problem with this amplifier. If we can look in there and hone in, you can sit me find a pointer. So if we look, we've got like a, a metal plate here. The and that is what the, the pots are mounted on. And that pot is that plate is riveted to the board. Um, which you can see. Well, I think it's riveted to the board. Yes, it is there. So you can see that rivet there. Sorry, there we go. So I'm looking through this camera. Sorry, there. You can see the rivet. Just there. So there's the rivet. Well, one rivet anyway. Um, there's another rivet there. Hiding there. Probably can't see it, but it's hiding. Protruding there. And then I think this other end is held on by these two jack sockets here. But what I can't see is how this here, which you can see, just see under that ridge there, it's a bit hard to get in, how that is fastened um, to the front of the amplifier. Uh, now I can. I've just realised I'm looking down there and thinking, oh, there's, there's no nuts on those, they're fastened in a different way. The nuts are missing. Some have got nuts on. See if we go if we go to that one there, you can just see the nut on that one. That's got a nut on. But half of them are missing. So that comes back down to my theory again with this amplifier. Someone's been in here and they haven't put it together correctly. That really threw me there, because looking there I thought, oh the nuts must be on that plate. And then I've just looked across and spotted that, that there is nuts on the other one. Oh, so let's get let's get some nuts on there and see if that problem uh, goes away. So I've turned this round, and this is what we've got. So we've got a nut missing off of there. We've got a nut on there, but it looks like that pot's been that knob has been glued on because I can't get that off for loving the money. Um, and I've had the old uh, twine round it to try and pull it off. Uh, nut on this one, no nut on this one no nut on that one or that one this is the one that's faulty that's not the original uh, Marshall knob either and pot miss uh, knob not missing off that one as well so let's just have a look at these I mean they look do they look the same is that slightly bigger that's like now they are the same but it's, that's just off something else it's still a Marshall knob though so well they've not fallen off have they so at some point, someone's been in here and just not bothered to put those back on. Um, ridiculous. So I've got to find some nuts now to put those on. And I've also got to I'll just get that off with an Allen slot. That one, because obviously I want to take them all off. Because if some of the nuts are missing, then maybe some of the nuts are loose. They're probably not bothered to tighten the ones that are on there. They're probably not bothered to tighten them up. In fact, there's only three on there. <laughs> the rest are missing. Right. I've put, right, I've put a nut on there. The moment of truth. I think that's done it. I think it just wasn't grounded there with having no nut on. All swearing is aborted. <laughs> yes, that's excellent. 
Yes, and suddenly the world is full of roses again. If I'd have had to have taken that board out, it would have been full of thorns and I wouldn't have been happy. And I may have had a, a serious swear off camera. So there we go, we've got all the controls back, all the knobs back on the controls. Uh, I've tightened up the bolts on the transformer and also the uh, star ground was a bit loose as well, so I've tightened that up. Tighten these sockets up, just general things you do on a service. Um, so this amp is, uh, it runs again. There's a few, there's a few bits and bobs that aren't great in it. Some soldering that's a bit iffy here and there, but it's it's okay. Um, it's not bad. It's just a bit untidy, that's all. But we don't seem to have any other issues. So the only thing is, um, I have run out of silicon, and I need some to put on that capacitor that's been added because it's a bit loose and also we just need a blob on those caps that are a bit loose if we don't they'll vibrate and eventually they'll be dry jointed so we need to do those but other than that this amp is ready for a test right it's back in its case we're going to see if we can do something about this covering now see if we can glue that back on somehow there we go that's a lot better i uh, used a tube of super glue mind you to glue it down i was fine super glue works best with those it's coming away a bit here in the bit it's okay but that was just getting really bad so i've just screwed just glued that down so that's good it's only on the back right let's go and give it a listen we also need to make sure that the reverb reverb is working as well so let's give it a listen right we've got this marshall ready for a test and you can see one of the knobs is off it and i'm afraid that part there is faulty. Now I think what's happened is that somebody's the reason those nuts were missing is somebody's had uh, that problem by leaving the nuts off the pot didn't have a ground um, which was a, a separate fault to what's actually wrong with the pot pot now works fine up when it's round there as soon as it starts getting down the bottom here you can see and you really have to touch it uh, if you look at the pot and you press with me having that on the tripod it's difficult to see but I think this pot has been added at some time and you can see where it's been cut down with a with an axe or and I'm wondering whether or not, whilst they've been cutting it, they've damaged it, or it's got banged at some point. I seem to remember these amps all had the the push the push on the spline shaft pots. This one's not spline shaft. Once it's up flat out on the, on the, once it's fully open and on the stop, it's not too bad, but when it's, when it's closed and on the stop, you can see just by touching it there, so that pot's had it. It's either been walloped, it's been changed and done badly, but whatever, it, it's, uh, I'm afraid that's all over. So that brings me back to where we were earlier, um, swearing, <laughs> we, have we got to take this board out, it looks very much like it now, if we want to make this amp right, because that's obviously, the, the, amp, the amp works, okay, so, and the clean channel, fine the reverb works everything works except for that pot on that channel so yeah a couple of things have been going on there with that one is they left the nut off and it just went grinding at all and uh, they've obviously been trying to get into it to change that and they've put then they've, they've either just thought oh this is just too difficult so they didn't bother putting the rest of the nuts back on when they put it together 
and uh, and it just happened to have a tube gone as well. So it, some amps are strange when you you know when you get faults. You you've got three separate faults there. One being the valve, uh, which was which was making it which was cut out completely. Got no signal. Then you've got one where the pot's not grounded, which is cutting out the signal. And then we've repaired that, and then you find that the pot's got some damage to it, and it's intermittent. So yeah, that's uh, not good not good at all but we'll have a listen anyway let's just have a listen to it let's find a guitar pick let's just have a, a blast on it and we can decide from there what we're doing <laughs> in these you know that they're not very big but that's quite a decent reverb for a small tank <laughs> most amps are reverb tanks go a full length of the amp I can tell you this one goes probably you know halfway at the most we never really looked at that did we when we got the back off it <laughs> It is a little, and that's about number four, you can hear a bit. It's not the powerfulest to reverbs, but if you wind it up, that works fine. So let's turn this clean channel down and get this master up. So that channel is very clean. Um, that which is the clean channel so if we flick the switch oops we've got the typical mar Marshall overdrive For a budget valve amp, which is really what these are now, that you know they're they're a, they're a budget budget tube amp, they they're not bad at all. So there's there's this myth about these running too hot, and some of them did. Um, the 60 watt ones, they did the JTM 60, and they did run hot, really hot. People used to put fans in the back of them, and they got red hot. But this this really is, you know. You wouldn't say it's running particularly hot at all. It's running really well. Um, so yeah, it, it's not a not a bad thing. Sadly, I'm afraid it's all or nothing gain though with that pot. We can't really. It's also knocking the, the top off it, the treble off it, when it's not working properly. So I suppose we do a bit of distortion playing, aren't we, on the bit of the uh, heavy metal playing. I'm very rusty at it these days. <laughs> Thank you. 
JTM 30 um, we've got it running it uh, sounds, sounds okay we've replaced the tube uh, we've replaced all those nuts that were missing we've tightened up all the the bolts on the transformers the star ground usual things we've serviced the pots and whatever else and but I'm afraid we are left with that bit of an issue there on that pot and uh, the only way we're going to replace that is to take the board out, I'm afraid. And that involves a further to work on this amp. But there we are, that's the Marshall JTM30 um, with slight fault. So, thanks for watching. Um, I, hope you, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful to some people. Um, so, you all take care and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So, bye bye for now. Thank you.